Rodolfo, in trying to understand perhaps the most fundamental question of what we are, this mind-body problem, what is our mind? There are two extreme conditions. One, the traditional human approach would say, to have a mind, you need something extra, a soul, a spirit, something not, you need something extra besides the brain. And the others, which some philosophers say, is that there's no problem. Consciousness doesn't exist at all. It's an illusion. Two extremes. Where are you? Okay, now, from, a, from, a, from my point of view as a neuroscientist, I would have to say, what do we know about consciousness from a brain point of view? Yes. And then the, the, uh, the more salutary uh, posture from a scientific point of view is to say, uh, can we relate what we know about the function of the brain with the existence of consciousness? Okay. Uh, is there a measurement that we can make? Is there something that we can determine that relates the physics, the physiology of brain to the ability we have to make images to have consciousness? And the first thing that happens is that we immediately remember that we exist as human beings in two enormously different states. States of being awake and states of being asleep. Very basic. Everybody sleeps. If you don't sleep, you die. Okay. Now, once something wonderful happens, when you sleep, you disappear. I tell my students, when you're asleep in class, you don't exist. <laughs> my smile says, you don't exist. You're just a functional state of your brain. Your brain doesn't always create you. You are one functional state of your brain, which we call being awake. Now, a lot of pathology also relates to being awake and being asleep, and we can discuss it in a moment. Okay, so if you were to say, now, what is the difference between being awake and being asleep? And this, this tells us something about the nature of consciousness. The answer is yes, it does, and the answer is beautiful. The thalamus and the cortex, the thalamus is a central nucleus inside the head that connects to the cortex. The cortex is a huge area of nervous system that goes back to the... So we have this, uh, this circular event uh, that is continuously going on. So it's not like thalamus is, is fires every, every if so often when the stimulus comes in. It's always going on. It is actually a continuously circular I think of it as a vortex, mm -hmm. something that is continuously going, continuously like your heart. It never stops for as long as you live. The brain is never quiet. Okay. So there's the circuitry. It's a circuit. It circuits the thalamus to the cortex, the cortex to the thalamus, and so on. So this and the frequency and the frequency tells you whether you exist or not. <laughs> it is that beautiful. It is almost, if you wish, pardon me, that simple. So if, you've, if your rhythms are slow, you don't exist. There is no consciousness. You're in deep sleep. You are in deep sleep. And what, what, is this, what rhythm is that? That rhythm is low frequency rhythm, that is, in the sense of uh, one a second in, in very deep sleep, and maybe three a second, and okay. then uh, 10 a second, and so on. So, okay. And those rhythms are generated by the intrinsic properties of single cells. So they operate. They sing, if you will. They, they move, they oscillate at a certain frequency. And they're doing it in, in, in conjunction with Because each other. they're connected to each other, then they do it in conjunction. So the, the, con the cognition, above all, is a functional state of the whole brain. Now, sleeping is very intriguing. If you fall asleep, all of you falls asleep. It's not like you fall asleep and you don't sleep, but you hear. <laughs> you just turn on. You just turn off, and you wake up, you immediately... So, the, the difference is monstrous. Yeah. I mean, the difference between existing and non-existing, and the fact that doing something like that can bring the whole thing up, tells you how, 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 how fast it is, how agile the system is. The agility has to, you know, you, you're driving, you fall asleep, and then you, and you don't hit the tree or whatever. So, so the system is capable of having enormous, coherent, functional states. Yeah. Under conditions of high frequency, you know, high frequency means the nervous system something in the order of 40 times per second, okay. known as gamma band. Known, this is electrophysiology that has been known at a single cell level, that has been known at this level of the EEG. You can see it in instruments such as I have here in the lab, an MEG. You can actually see somebody falling asleep or waking up. 
by just the frequency of the star. Just by the frequency of the star. Correct. System. Why? Because the frequency determines the geometry. As the frequency gets uh, higher, the, the neurons that are coming together becomes more and more precise and more and, and smaller. So, um, like imagine in a TV uh, that there were only four events, four squares. Yeah, yeah. The pixelation was enormous. Right, right. You can do nothing with it. Yeah. As you as you make it more finer, you have higher higher resolution and high resolution TVs, but many pixels. So you find that this high frequency activity pixelates. It it actually uh, allows things to be divided very precisely. Okay, so we have uh, the ability of uh, have this recurrent thalamocortical activity that can be low, in which case there is no consciousness, or higher. In which you become conscious. <clears throat> so what is it that's happening when you're conscious? You're actually allowing certain pixels, certain areas of the cortex to be active and others to be non-active. Mm -hmm. so, so you describe reality by who is being mm -hmm. active in every one of these 40 hertz events. And you call this a, a mindness, a mindness state. Right. So, so, so what happens is when you, when you correlate what's happening in animals or in us, you find that this state is the state in which mind is generated. So, so if you could if you could remove the bone and actually see the brain looking at it, you will say, "Aha! I see what you're thinking." Like when you actually uh, uh, feel your muscles when you move. The fact is, they're covered with bone, so you don't see it. In the brain, yeah. But you can see it electrically, and then you can indeed see that yes, the 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 granularity increases. So conscious state is a state of high granularity in the functioning of the thalamocortical system. Definition, no problem. Okay. okay, fine. So what happens from that point on? Why is that interesting? How does right. that right. help right. to put the whole things together? Right. Well, the visual system and the auditory system and so on have the same granularity and have the same rhythm. So you can superimpose now. So you get a binding. So you, you get, get a, a binding that a is a dynamic binding because there's coherence in this particular type so of So you frequency. have a temporal coherence with similar frequencies that bring different modalities, sight, sound, other other things together, memories that get a binding into one That's conscious right. entity. Right. So so this vortex, this continuous is me, is you. So I have a book called I I of the vortex. Because that vortex That's is, right. is, is really the conscious. Th that is the, so the conscious is something that is continuously going. Okay, now. When you're awake. When you're awake. Right. So now issue is so how does it how does it function? What does it do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now the system is recurrent. Now recurrent means it it still remembers from the past with every recurrence, right? Because it's because it goes back. Because it is recurrent, it has the incredible ability of being able to predict. Because it knows where things were a moment ago. And they and as time goes on, it knows where they should be next. So as the as the as the next wave comes, you say you can imagine the system is moving in time. So it has something called a delta T look ahead, which is a mathematical term that says, yes, you're actually proceeding to because of the because of the recurrence, you're beginning to see what is happening next, even before it happens. When the in, when the information comes in, so yeah, that's where the ball is. Yes, well, it's moving, but I catch it. Or or, or a frog sees a, 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 a fly going across and throws it, and it hits, hits it right between the eyes right. or whatever. But when you start to throw, the fly is not where that's you right. hit it. It has to predict where so it's going it, to be when so, it comes. And that is how the system works. This continuously this vortex, this dynamic process, that this celebration that we call consciousness is in fact a dynamic property of the anatomy of the system. It's, it's the dynamic property of the anatomy, this thort of, of, of the thalamocortical vortex of Absolutely. 40 per second, yeah. and the purpose of it is the, the seat the of binding. This pre the binding and the seat of predictivity. Right, which we call one. What are you? What I'm the seat of productivity. Why? Because you can't possibly please don't have more than one seat of productivity. <laughs> you need to focalize. You need right. so it is simply a question of reducing to the minimum number of variables in order to control movement. So uh -huh. you must be able to so 
basically, to me, the, this self is the center of prediction. It is the product of prediction, basically, right? So, so you 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 know that your motricity has a proper direction you know, be, because you know that's what I want. That one there, that one, right? Uh, so 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 uh, you're internalizing movement. You're pre you're using predictivity, and this is the center of consciousness, and that is created by this thalamocortical that's system. That's right, and. They can be but one. You don't want your legs to go in one direction, your <laughs> arms to go in the other, and so on and so forth. So that is, in fact, the crux of the matter. And the, beautiful, the beauty of it is that you see pathology that interfere with this, and you know that it is true. You, know, you can demonstrate that this is not so far from, not, no, it's, it's, a, that it's a good hypothesis that is testable. Because when it is interrupted through pathologies, trauma, injury, when, when, when the 40 hertz activity disappears, so does consciousness. And it can happen in the, the whole brain, in half a brain, it can happen in one aspect of the brain. So the correlation is beautiful. This is something that was initially discovered by, by Wolf Singer in Germany, and that, you know, at the same time, many, or close to the same time, many other people realized. But it was a surprise because people were not thinking that the brain was so, so fundamentally. Uh, a timing device, so, so fundamentally a resonant device.